Hello, welcome to the second part of file aliases. Uh, we have discussed uh, this first part in that we had discussed the lymphatic file aliases, which is caused by mainly in India by W. Bancrofty, and in some uh, in the Far East it is caused by Brugia Malai. In India, it is Brugia Malai is common in Kerala and some other state but most common filarial worms in India is W. Bancrofty. The We had also discussed the, the pathogenesis of the disease and its clinical feature and the life cycle of this worm. So, uh, we will be discussing following things. First, the laboratory diagnosis of lymphatic filariasis because lymphatic filariasis is very common in India, which produces elephantasis. We will also discuss other filarial worms like Loa Loa, Oncocerca volvulus, and Mansonella. We will discuss its prevention and control, how to control this disease. So, these are the objectives of today. So first we start the most with most important thing that is laboratory diagnosis of lymphatic filariasis. So these are the various schemes by which we can uh, diagnose this. So first thing is the demonstration of microfilaria. If you can demonstrate the microfilaria which is there in the peripheral blood, you can diagnose. You can demonstrate the adults by a radiological mean or any other mean. There are some immunological tests, serological tests of detection of antibody or antigen and there are some other tests. We will see what are they. Uh, for uh, demonstration of microfilaria, you can go with thick and thin blood smear. Just like uh, with what we have studied in the malaria, thick and thin blood smear it would be very uh, easily seen and uh, microfilaria is quite big compared to the other parasitic uh, thing which you see in the blood so you can easily see even in the unstained preparation also uh, you can see it in body fluid and urine also in the chylus urine it is excited Demonstration of adult can be done uh, seen in the biopsy where a lymph node it is there in the lymph node and in that you can see it. In immunological test antigen detection is very useful. Uh, the circulatory antigens of microfilaria is detected by either ELISA or even rapid card test. Antibody detection can be done though it is uh, less sensitive and specific than the antigen detection. Skin test may be done which is a uh, hypersensitivity test where you inject the filarial antigen intradermally and there would be immunological reaction. And the other test includes molecular tests by PCR you can detect the thing and some indirect evidences like eosinophilia. Uh, it is a very important character where you want to diagnose it there would be marked eosinophilia so it would be very helpful raised IgE level is also one of the thing which would help you in the diagnosis of this disease the one thing which you must have uh, heard in the first lecture is the nocturnal periodicity Speci specifically it is valid in W. Bancrofty. Uh, so when you collect the blood, you should be very aware about this thing because this microfilaria in daytime would remain in the capillaries of the internal organs and not found in the peripheral blood. And during night, which is a routine biting time of its uh, vector or the intermediate host, for India it is Culex and it Culex usually bites in the night. So this microfilaria would come out in the peripheral blood during night time. So usually it is 10 pm to 4 am. 
So if we want to diagnose this disease, we need to collect the blood during this time, then only you will be able to see microfilaria. If you collect blood in the daytime, despite of having microfilaria, it would not be there in the peripheral blood and you will fail to see it in your microscopy. Though there is a one way out of that and that is DEC provocation test. If you give that tablet uh, in the 2 mg per kg weight, so usually 100 milligram DEC is given to the person. So that due to effect of that DEC, this whole microfilaria would come in the come out in the peripheral blood even in daytime and then just after uh, half an hour of giving DEC you can collect the blood so if it is not feasible to collect blood at night time DEC provocation test can be done uh, and with that it would come in the the other thing is chyluria we have seen it in the pathogenesis this is chylus urine the urine is creamish milky white color and opaque due to rupture of uh, various limb and it would come it would be excited in the urine this chylus urine itself is a very diagnosis and we see if it in microscopy you can see the microfilaria in unstained preparation it is live and moving microfilaria can be seen you can even stain it This is how you can see it in unstained preparation. You can see the sheath is there. This is filaria and these are the various cells. So this is filaria and this is the sheath of that filaria. In stain film, you can go with thick and thin smear. Uh, this is thick smear. This is thin smear. In that we can see the microfilaria. Uh, and which is quite big so this is RBC uh, WBC in thick smear you will not see RBCs only WBC uh, and the microfilaria is seen uh, this is the sheath of the microfilaria these are the nuclei which is there all along the body and this is tail portion this is cephalic space so this is how you can uh, see the microfilaria and just by seeing the microfilaria you can identify the species of area so most commonly species seen in India are these two W. Bancrofti and Brugia Malay uh, the length of W. Bancrofti is slightly higher around 300 micrometer while it is around 200 up to 230 uh, the appearance the Curves are graceful and sweeping curves in case of W. Bancrofti. Here it is kinky uh, and with secondary curves, so it does not look very smooth. Uh, cephalic space, the length and breadth of the sheath is equal in the cephalic space, while here length is double than the breadth, so it is a longer nuclear column. Uh, nuclear is discrete and separately seen clearly while here it is blurred and tail tip here the tail is pointed and that is free of nuclei while here you will see two distant nuclei are at the tip and the other are subterminal so if we see this this is what we call graceful curves while here there would be secondary curves in this curve there would be again there would be curve so it is known as kinky in Brukia Malay these are the other worms like loa loa uh, these three are sheathed they have a sheath over the microfilm this yellow color is sheath while this mensonella is unsheathed so you can see this so by looking at the syphilis cephalic space looking at the tail portion and the arrangement of nucleus in the tail portion you can differentiate these worms easily though 
this would be having different clinical manifestations these two are only causing lymphatic filariasis so if you are suspecting lymphatic filariasis you need to identify between these two so that is very easily done uh, by seeing the morphology of microfilaria the serological test uh, the demonstration of circulating antigen is very useful and having considerably very high sensitivity where uh, it is a uh, soluble filarial antigen are detected using monoclonal antibodies it can be done by elisa as well as nowadays rapid card tests uh, are available so that are very rapid and uh, very easily done even in the field so here you can see this in this test there are two cards uh, if this is test band and control band if filarial antigen are present there would be two bands would appear if it is absent then the control only control band would appear and test band would be blank so uh, by this card test you can easily demonstrate now if we see other worms uh, which are common not in india but uh, worldwide uh, one is loa loa uh, the name of genus and the species is the same so it is loa loa it is endemic in west and central Af africa and day biting flies chrysops are causing this uh, infection and there is a diurnal periodicity so the infection is transmitted the microfilaria would appear in the blood during daytime so it is 12 pm onwards to 2 pm so uh, it is actually opposite to w bancrofti which appears during night here it is appearing in midday and it uh, remains <coughs> wandering in the subcutaneous tissue that's why it is also known as calabar swelling uh, named after the place or also known as fugitive swelling because this swelling keeps on changing its site in the subcutaneous tissue so that's why it is known as fugitive and um, it may produce ocular lesion also so this adult form can be detected in the eye and can be removed from the eye here you can see this is the adult form so it may occur in the other subcutaneous tissues more commonly but when it is there in the eye it can be seen like this so that is low alone the important is oncosarcovolvulus uh, though loa loa is uh, seen in the eye but this worm is more responsible for producing eye related problem so also known as blinding fi filaria producing river blindness now it is known as river blindness because this uh, intermediate host of this which is black fly the fly of seen simulium species they are found all along at the belt of the rivers and so those who are residing near to that would develop this disease and may develop blindness so it, it is one of the uh, second most common infectious cause of blindness overall world so that is the importance of this worm otherwise this worm would be uh, seen as a nodule in the subcutaneous tissue and when you excise that nodule and see it you will see plenty of adult worms are there but when it enters in the ocular thing it may lead to photophobia and various eye symptoms and finally may lead to uh, blindness also so that is the importance of this worm though it is not seen in india mostly common in the africa in the forest where river is there big river is there and uh, even in some part of south america so that is incosarca volvulus for and finally the mansonella species uh, they are causing filariasis of serous cavity 
microfilaria are unsheathed so that is a distinguishing characteristic seen in africa and the south america not seen in india much intermediate host is culicoids and uh, relatively non pathogenic or having very uh, symptoms are not very uh, noticeable so asymptomatic or non pathogenic so uh, with this we finished various uh, filarial worms which are common there are few more also which is of zoonotic importance and from animal it is transmitted to men but we are not discussing as it is not very useful to us uh, prevention is the you know that uh, the intermediate host would transmit the infection so by any mean if you can prevent that bite of mosquito or other flies you can prevent the disease so use of mosquito net and the re mosquito repellents would be the or by any mean you can eliminate the uh, intermediate host for example culex mosquito is transmitting it in india so if we can control the vector obviously we can uh, control or the other way of preventing the disease is treating the carrier if you treat the carrier and eliminate from the carriers uh, you can be safe and otherwise treatment of this dc is the choice of drug the dose is higher when treatment in provocation test it is 2 mg per kg body weight uh, in treatment it is 6 mg per uh, kg body weight uh, it is also used in mass therapy when you want to clear it from the entire endemic area everyone those uh, who can take that medication so except the child and the pregnant lady you can give to everyone at once and it is used to eradicate the uh, from the community and it would treat the carriers also because dec would kill both adult worm as well as microfilaria ivermectin can be given it kills only microfilaria though in india it is not that much common compared to the other countries and tetracycline or the doxycycline can be given to kill the endosymbiotic bacteria that is wolbachia that helps the it is useful for the filarial fertility as well as the immunopathogenesis uh, so it should also be treated so antibacterial should also be the part of treatment of this disease so with this we finish today's lecture uh, in this summary you have to remember lab diagnosis because that is the most important lab diagnosis of lymphatic filariasis and the difference between uh, w bancrofti and b malai that is very important so thank you for listening to today's lecture thank you very much